This is part two of section 1.7. I want to solve this inequality. So the first thing I want to do is I want to distribute this negative four and see where I end up. So negative four X minus eight is greater than or, e or greater than not, not or equal to three X plus 20. Okay. So I want to get my X's together and think about it. We're going to end up having to divide by something if we end up with a number in front of our X. And if we can avoid having the coefficient of x being a negative number, then we don't have to remember to flip our sign around. So if I look at this, I have the option of moving the negative 4x to the right or the, or the 3x over to the left. I'm going to choose to move this over here so that I can have a positive 7. So I have negative 8 is greater than 7x plus 20. Okay, now I'll move the 20 over here, which gives me negative 28 is greater than 7x. Now I need to divide both sides by 7. I do not have to flip the sign because 7 is a positive number. It does not matter whatsoever that this is a negative number, only that the number we're dividing by is positive. So this gives me negative 4 is greater than x. Okay, so I know I have a negative 4 on my graph. This does not have an equal to, so I'm going to use parentheses. All right, so my x values are supposed to be smaller than negative 4. So think of a number that's smaller than negative 4, negative 10. Which side of this is negative 10 on? It's on this side. So I would shade this direction, and it has parentheses on it. Notice that we do not shade the direction this points because our x is not on the left. Now, if you want to, you can switch this around to x is less than negative 4. If you flip the direction of an inequality, you have to flip the sign around. These are our equivalent statements. Now, if you want to do this every time and then use this sign to tell you which way to point, you can do that. It does work, but you have to remember that the x needs to be on the left before you can do that. Now, for interval notation, the, the left-hand boundary is at negative infinity, which always gets parentheses, and it goes up to negative 4, and close parentheses. Okay, now let's look at this one. This is what is essentially a three-sided inequality. Your two signs here, they need to point the same direction, but they do not have to match. I could have an equal to on one of them, but not the other. When you start off with a three-sided inequality, that can happen. But like I said, they do need to point the same direction. And more than that, as you're working them along, you should be able to cover up the center and one of the two signs and have something that's true. 7 is less than 11. And like I said, it could have less than or equal to. And if I covered up the other one and it had less than or equal to, it should still be true. And it is. Okay. Now what we want to have happen when we have a problem like this is that we want to end up with our variable alone in the middle. Okay. And then whatever you do to one to get rid of whatever here, whatever you would do to one side, you need to do to the other two. So we really do think of this as a three-sided problem. So to get this x alone, I would need to subtract 5. So I would need to do that here and here as well. And that gives me 2 is less than x is less than 6. This is easier to graph than the other kind because our x value is literally between 2 and 6. These do not have equal twos, so I will use parentheses on them. So I have parentheses at 2, I have parentheses at 6, and we shade between them. So our answer in interval notation is 2 comma 6. Okay. So let's try this one right here. 3 is less than or equal to 4x minus 3 is less than 19. Notice that our two signs do point in the same direction, but I do have a mixture of them. We want our x alone in the middle, so I am going to add 3 to everything. Okay, so this is 6 is less than or equal to 4x is less than, what is that, 21, 22. 
22. Okay. Now I want the x alone, so I'm going to divide everything by a 4. 4 is positive, so I don't have to flip the signs. If I needed to divide by a negative here, I would have to flip both of them. So I get some fractions here, I, and I'm going to reduce these. Uh, 6 over 4 is 3 halves, is less than or equal to x, is less than, that would be 11 halves. Okay. So what do I have here? I have a bracket with the 3 halves. I will have parentheses with the 11 halves. And I shade between them. Okay. And so my answer in interval notation would be bracket 3 halves, comma 11 halves. Okay, now in the last section, we talked about absolute value equations. And what we had to do was we had to get our absolute value by itself. And then once we had that, we set it equal to positive number and equal to negative number. Now we're going to talk about absolute value inequalities. These feel a lot the same in that we're going to deal with a positive and a negative. But the biggest thing we have to recognize is the difference between a le what I call the less than problem and what I call the greater than problem. For the less than problem, what we end want to have happen is our absolute value by itself less than a number or less than or equal to. Okay, so we want to get the absolute values alone, then using the same sign either without or with the equal to on it. We're going to rewrite it as a three-sided inequality using the positive and negative versions of the non-absolute value side. What I mean by that is here is a k, and I'm going to put this without the absolute value between the negative k and the positive k. Okay. Now the graph will be bounded. What I mean by that is, is that it's possible to draw a circle around the entire graph region. This is an example of bounded. I can draw a circle around the whole thing. If this went off to infinity, I can't draw a circle around that because I can't get past infinity to draw a circle around it. That would be an example of something that's unbounded. Okay, so let's solve these inequalities and we're going to write our answers in interval notation and then we're going to graph them. Okay, so starting off with about the simplest kind of less than problem we can have. The absolute value is by itself. It's less than 5. So what I would do is I rewrite this as negative 5 less than x less than 5. Most of the time I'm going to have something to solve in here, so it's going to be similar to the other three-sided problems we just did. But And after you do that, you have your solution. So my answer here is between negative 5 and positive 5. These are, do not have equal twos, so these are parentheses, and I should shade between them. Okay, and then my answer using interval notation, I use the same symbols I used here. Always your left boundary and then your right boundary. This is a bounded graph. I could draw a circle around the entire thing. So let's do the absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 4. The absolute value is by itself, so I'm going to rewrite this as negative 4 is less than or equal to, drop the absolute value, x plus 3, is less than or equal to 4. Now we want to get the x alone in the middle, so I need to subtract 3 from everything, all three sides to give me negative 7 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. Now I'm going to put these two on my graph and these are going to have brackets. So I have negative 7 and I have 1 shade between them and then use the same symbols and numbers to write your interval notation. So this would be negative 7 with a bracket, comma 1 with a bracket. Just as a reminder, in the old notation, what this graph would have looked like would look like this. A closed-in circle with a negative 7, 
and a closed in circle with a one because these had brackets and the shaded between them. Old notation, better notation.